Alright, so and then here's the motor currently right now, and I have a lot of different coils in there, and it didn't really go as planned, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm still I'm still wanting to tinker around with this thing once in a while. I mean, I got like three inch by one inch thick, I'm pretty sure grade forty N forty five neodymium magnets. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, I've had this motor for quite a while, and I just really put it off for a very long time until now I'm kind of thinking about playing around with it again. But, also in the past, I also had an idea with, uh, like, these, this is 18 gauge, this is, uh, 10 gauge wire, so yeah, it's a pretty big difference. But this is the coil size that I used originally when I designed the motor. But here, this is kind of cool, though, but... See how this one is twisted? I took this coil here and uh, strung it out. It's 300 feet long. And I basically put that in half so it's 150 feet on this. But this is 300, but I have it twisted. So it's one half is 150 feet and one half is another 150 feet. But, you know, twisted around. But my idea was, is I noticed with it being twisted, the... Uh, the, the coil has less drag against uh, permanent magnets and it has a slightly weaker field than a traditionally wrapped coil but I feel like this has a de and it definitely has a faster run time with this and it barely pulls any more power like barely and I'll show you that in the uh, video clips that the one that runs at a higher voltage is this one and it's really not by much and the one that runs by a slightly lower is this one, but you can definitely tell the difference in speed on the motor. It runs way faster on this coil than it does with the traditionally wound coil. So, I wouldn't mind designing my entire motor off of wires like this, but it takes a lot of work and time to, like, twist this. So, yeah, just imagine. <laughs> Yeah, I um, would like to figure out a way to do that with this motor and experiment with how it generates power and how it runs. But as of right now, my motor is currently just a generator. And uh, yeah, I've actually had this motor since like, when was it? When, I think 2018 when I built this thing and it's been sitting around for a long time. I have uh, fully ceramic uh, bearings here and a stainless steel shaft it's all acrylic put a lot of work and money into this thing I'll tell you that <laughs> multiple different coils all kinds of different stuff I've done with this thing but yeah I'm thinking about working on it again and debating about what I feel like doing this other coil here I don't know why my original design with this was to make it motor at slash generator, but this was supposed to be a pickup coil. And I couldn't get it to work like a normal pickup coil for some reason. I don't know if it's because it's on top of this coil here. Because it's the same one. It's, it's just one of these with a really 24 gauge wire over the top to have a, you know, a higher voltage. And it should have a higher voltage than the 12 gauge or the 10 gauge because of the fact that I have a 
way more turns comparing to that. So it's got to be getting a higher voltage in order to, you know, like, make it be a pickup coil, like, work like a pickup coil. And I'm thinking, seeing I have every single coil in the whole thing, and being on the exact same coil that I'm firing, it doesn't work. I think that's why. So I'd have to have a separate pickup coil somewhere else with this design. So, yeah, unfortunately, this does not work. <laughs> it's a kind of a bummer. So right now, it's just... A fun project to work on, I guess. All right, let's see. Up. And I actually did forget one more thing: is the fact that uh, with this motor, there's a special thing about it too that I am very proud of. <laughs> but uh, so the magnets are orientated all north, going in the same direction all the way around on all six. And then the cool part about this design, oh, this thing's heavy. It's always like, I think 40 pounds. It levit I have it to where it basically levitates. It floats. It sits on magnetic levitation down here, and there's barely any drag. Like, it takes nothing to, like, turn at all. So that's pretty cool. I think things spin so easily. And I also have other coils too that are like extremely fine gauge, but I had an issue with the uh, supplier that gave me the coils. They were all messed up, unfortunately, so I never got to even play with that project. I did a little bit because like I got about half of this side, so I did one whole side, but I couldn't get it to still work because it had such an extreme voltage. I was literally running 42 gauge wire. It's super, super fine. Yeah, I'll show you. Super fine. I wouldn't mind trying this gauge, though. It's 30 gauge. But yeah, I have uh, 42 gauge. It's it's underneath these. But uh, 42 gauge wire is extremely thin. It's thinner than hair, I think. Yeah, here's one. Alright, here's one. So yeah, you can see how thin that is. That's ridiculous, ain't it? So I tried making my entire motor out of something like that, and it didn't go as planned. Yeah. So. That's definitely an interesting idea, though, because the, basically I was just trying to make a really big, uh, like, um, a motor that barely uses any power at all, and it can run on very little input. But extremely high voltages, like I mean, in like thousands of volts. But my issue, what I came across, was the fact that switching it was nearly impossible because of such high voltage. And the little bit you would spin it, it would like this little bit of a turn would create thousands of volts. I'm not even joking. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So trying to switch that and control how much voltage there was was extremely hard. But I I noticed with like a tiny little capacitor it would run all day not even joking it would run all day with it would be spinning only like this fast though but it would literally run all day on like a thousand microfarad capacitor and I actually have a bigger one and it, it would it would barely run it down <laughs> so that's why I wanted to continue working with the very very fine wire because that could make a motor extremely efficient but it's very hard to make and I might have to if I wanted to do it again I would definitely have to go do a slightly uh, thicker gauge wire because 42 is just unworkable honestly too too uh, too thin all right well that's it for everything on this video